Part 5 After thoughtful contemplation, the little girl's father finally spoke your mother passed away a year ago. We will gather our friends and relatives for a ceremony to honor her memory. You, my child, will be in charge of preparing the feast with your aunts offering their assistance. I'll take care of making the tala. The following day he approached his neighbor and revealed. My wife passed away a year ago and I'm planning a memorial ceremony with a grand feast. I could use some help from you. The neighbor questioned help. What do you need? The little girl's father explained. I want to make a large quantity of tala but I lack enough pots. Can you lend me yours? I'll return them after the feast. The neighbor hesitated expressing concern borrow my pots? I don't know. They're good pots. What if you break them? Assuringly the father responded no no. I'll be very careful. Please neighbor I need your help. Reluctantly the neighbor agreed, albeit with anger take my pots then. But if you break them you must pay me a lot of money. The little girl's father brought all the borrowed pots home handling the beautiful pot with a chip very carefully. Placing it near his bed he attempted to use a stick to transform it. But nothing happened. The little girl observed and intervened it's the wrong stick father. You need our neighbor's stick. He keeps it on the roof of his house. Her father decided then we must wait. On the day of the ceremony the little girl and her aunts worked diligently creating piles of injera and numerous delectable dishes. Friends and relatives gathered from afar to remember the deceased woman. Guests expressed admiration she was so beautiful and fondly remembered she was my best friend. The man brought out the neighbor's pots filled with tala keeping only one inside, the pot with the chip on top. Pulling his daughter aside the little girl's father whispered look our neighbor is here now with his daughter. His house is empty. Let's go and find his stick. You must come and show me where it is. They hurried to the neighbor's house and the little girl pointed to the stick on the roof. Taking it down they returned unnoticed. As guests enjoyed themselves outside the man and his daughter went unnoticed. Now father urged the little girl touch the pot with the stick and you will see my mother. The man touched the pot and instantly the little girl's mother appeared lying on the ground with closed eyes unresponsive. Overwhelmed the man cried wife. Dear wife. Is it really you? Outside someone called where is our host? Why aren't they here with us? The little girl insisted come father we must go to our guests again. She took the stick and touched her mother's body turning it back into a pot. Glaring at his daughter anger evident. The man declared my neighbor killed my wife. He keeps her in his house and she is his servant. He has the evil eye. Frightened the little girl asked what are you going to do father? Her father responded you will see. Go outside and serve food to our guests. Chapter 6 Following her father's instructions the little girl went outside to continue serving food and tala to the guests. Meanwhile her father quietly approached the men of his family instructing them bring your weapons. There is an enemy at my feast. He is a man with the evil eye. 
his relatives left one by one and returned armed. Now child the little girl's father directed her go into the house and bring out the pot and the stick. Carefully the little girl brought out the pot and the stick placing them beside her father. He took the stick, touched the pot, and immediately the body of his deceased wife lay on the ground. The guests were astonished. It's your wife. Our sister. They exclaimed. But she died a year ago. How can she be here? Frightened, the neighbor began to retreat quietly. Quick. The little girl's father ordered. Catch him. Don't let him go. He is the man with the evil eye. His relatives apprehended the neighbor surrounding him with their weapons. Terrified, the neighbor stammered, This is my wife's body, but she is dead. You were keeping her body. You were using her as your servant. But where is her soul? I don't know, the neighbor confessed. I didn't, I don't, give my wife her soul? The little girl's father shouted. Or we will kill you. Yes, give her back her soul, echoed the man's relatives. Facing the furious crowd, the man with the evil eye pleaded, Don't kill me. I'll give her soul back to her. I'll bring her to life, but you must promise to let me go. All eyes turned to the little girl's father. I promise, he declared. If you bring my wife's soul back, you can go. But you can never live in this place again. The man with the evil eye bent over the dead woman's body. Instantly she opened her eyes and sat up. What, where am I? She questioned. Mother. The little girl shouted and rushed into the woman's arms. My own dear wife. Her husband rejoiced. Unnoticed the neighbor and his daughter quietly walked away. From that day forward no one ever saw them again. The little girl her father and mother lived happily together for many more years. Chapter 7 And that concluded Hannah is the end of the story. Hannah's father regarded her and asked did the story frighten you? Oh yes, father, replied Hannah. It's a true story. My aunt told me it was true. Suddenly there was another knock at the door. Hannah screamed. It's our neighbor. She cried. Don't let her come in. She has the evil eye. Stop it, Hannah, her father admonished. Be quiet. Go and open the door. Oh, father, please, no, Hannah hesitated. Her father's anger surfaced. Open the door, Hannah. No. He insisted. Reluctantly, Hannah approached the door and opened it. The old neighbor stood there and Hannah felt very frightened. The old woman's face appeared ugly. I brought your coffee back, she said. I didn't need it. Hannah thought she is looking at me. She is putting her evil eye on me. Then unexpectedly the old woman smiled. Ah, Hannah, she said. You are a good girl. My little daughter was like you. Tears welled in the old woman's eyes and streamed down her cheeks. Hannah's father stood beside her now. What happened to your daughter? He inquired of the neighbor. God took her, the old woman responded. She died many years ago. She is with him now in heaven. She was like your little girl, good and happy and sweet. God bless you, little Hannah. 
Then she turned and departed. Hannah and her father returned to sit by the fire. Well, Hannah, her father remarked, Are you frightened of our neighbor now? No, replied Hannah. She is sad and old and lonely. I was sorry for her. But I thought at first. You thought she had the evil eye, her father noted. You know, Hannah, that story is a bad one. Many good people have suffered because of it. When I was a child, an old man lived near our house. He wasn't friendly to other people. He shouted at them sometimes. I think he had sickness in his mind. He has the evil eye, everyone said. No one talked to that poor man. Children threw stones at him. At last he died alone and unhappy. But did he have the evil eye, father? Hannah asked. No. He was just a sad, sick old man, her father clarified. Forget this story, Hannah. It is a cruel one. And it is not true.